Root is an area control game with extremely asymmetric woodland creatures vying for control of the root of this grand woodland forest. The game seats two to four players and takes about an hour and a half to play. Designed by Leader Games, Root may look cute and quirky with all the woodland critters plastered all over it, but it's actually a ruthless, cutthroat war game that's not the most easy thing to get into, but once that ball gets rolling, my god, this game is fulfilling. Root is an incredibly unique area control game in that different factions are ridiculously asymmetric. You think you've seen variable player powers, but you ain't seen nothing until you've tried out stuff from Leader Games. Like, straight up everyone's almost playing different games, that's how different the turn structures are from faction to faction. You got the generic area control dudes, then you got these action cue guys, and there's even a Dungeons and Dragons murder hobo running around like this whole thing is just a Skyrim quest or something. So, yeah, the gist here is don't be fooled by the small size of this box and the very cute aesthetic. Root is 100% a ruthless war game that has quite the steep learning curve, but hey, it's totally worth it if you want to see a bunch of woolen animals act like a bunch of ruthless dickheads. Here's what you get inside a game of Root. You got three instruction booklets, four faction boards, a double-sided map, Marquise de Cap faction pieces, the Eerie faction pieces, the Woolen Alliance pieces, the Vagabond stuff, a bunch of setup items for the Vagabond, two 12-sided dice, a 54-card deck, a bunch of faction overview cards, and some quick setup cards. Alright, here's a summary of everything that's in the game. Three rule books, your deck, the main board, the four faction boards, and the four faction stuff that goes with them, the overview cards, the quick setup, and lastly stuff you put on the board for setup. Alright, let's go over to how to play. So if we were to go over how to play every single faction root, this video is going to take forever. So we're just going to go over the basics of the game and skip a bunch of new ones. Your objective in this game is to score 30 points, which every faction does a little differently. Or to declare dominance with one of these dominance cards, which changes your ring condition to controlling certain areas on the board. Some terminology and concepts to know. These spaces right here are called clearings. They're connected by paths. Every clearing has a suit type, mouse, rabbit, or fox. Personally, I just say orange, yellow, red. All clearings have empty squares that players can build buildings in. Then there's this deck of cards that everyone draws from. Cards also have mouse, rabbit, fox colors, which matter sometimes for faction abilities. But then there's also these blue bird cards, which means it's a wild color and counts as all colors. This deck is also where the aforementioned dominance cards come from. Next, there's three core actions you're gonna have to know that apply to all factions in Root. Moving, battle, and crafting. Moving is simple. When you do it, you take any amount of dudes on a clearing, move them along a path to an adjacent clearing. Caveat though, whenever you move, you must rule either the clearing you were in or the one you're going to. Ruling a clearing just means you have the most dudes in that clearing. To battle, you pick a clearing where you have dudes and someone else has their shit. You choose which player you're fighting and roll both dice. The attacker uses the higher value and both players can then assign hits to their stuff. Lastly, crafting involves the main deck of cards. Crafting basically just means how you play cards from your hand, but cards have a requirement on the bottom left of them. All factions have some sort of crafting piece, which is usually something they have to put in a clearing that counts towards the crafting requirements of cards by taking on the color of the clearing it's in. If you have two yellow crafting pieces, you can craft this card. As example, the cats craft by having these workshop buildings and clearings. Those are the core actions, and the rest of them are going to be faction specific. Faction player boards go over every possible thing that faction can do, and they're all organized in three phases. Birdsong, Daylight, and Evening, which have to be done in order and help to organize the flow of a turn. Rapid fire guide for all the base game factions, go! Orange cats have an HQ in a quarter somewhere and like building sh** everywhere for points so those buildings help them do sh** like crafting, recruiting, and building more buildings. At the start of the turn, these saw buildings produce wood tokens which are used to build buildings. They can then do three actions from this list of fighting, moving, recruiting, and building. Also they can gain additional actions by discarding blue bird cards. At the end of their turn, they naturally draw cards. Actual blue birds have a decree of actions as mandatory to follow. At the start of their turn, they must add one or two cards in their hand to their decree in one of these slots. Then they must resolve the entire decree from left to right, with each card meaning do that action once in any location of that card's color. Obviously, this can get out of hand very quickly. If at any point, while resolving the decree, you cannot do an action, you fall into turmoil and wipe the decree clean, lose some points, and go straight to the last part of their turn. By the way, during the end of the turn, they draw some cards and gain points for every building they have out. Also, those buildings are how they craft and spawn dudes. 
Green Via Kong like to stir it up and hella kill stuff with these sympathy tokens that they place everywhere. At the start of their turns, they can do stuff involving these sympathy tokens, like putting them in clearings, killing stuff in clearings with sympathy tokens, and building bases where stuff is killed. Everything involving sympathy is fueled by this deck that's separate from their actual hand. They have to discard from the deck any time to do anything involving sympathy. They can add cards from their hand into this deck, and once they build bases with sympathy shenanigans, they can finally start having dudes on the board to actually move around and fight. Crafting is done with sympathy, and they get points from placing sympathy. Oh yeah, also attacking them is really hard because sympathy tokens steals cards whenever people f*** with them, and they also use the higher roll in battle even when defending. Lastly, we have the Murder Hobo, who likes to LARP really hard by completing quests and exploring runes for sick loot. The Vagabond isn't really a faction, it's actually just one guy running around, so he ignores a lot of the game's normal rules involving movement and combat. His board will have a whole bunch of these items all over it. Each one represents an action he can take by flipping it over. Boots to move, swords to attack, torches to explore runes, you get the idea. He unflips items at the start of his turn and is also the only guy who can do this weird shit where he goes into the forest that are in between clearings. He gets points by exploring runes on the board, completing quests, which is this deck of cards exclusive to him, and by either helping or harming factions depending on if he becomes their friends or enemies. Crafting is done with these hammer items, and their colors depend on the clearing he's in. So that's how Root works, let's get into the actual review where we go over what we think are the pros and cons of the game. First up, the pros, starting with the components. We really appreciate just how physically small this game is. Like, look at this box. This is just plain deceptive, the amount of weight that's going on in here. I usually expect war games to be at a minimum about this size, but no, 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 Roop is a party game size box, like holy moly. Not only that, but the aesthetic of Roop is jam-packed with tiny, adorable woodland critters. Like man, I love the art style here. It's no wonder that when people see this small box with a bunch of small animals on it, they think it's a light little game, but no, 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 oh no, no. Anyways, moving on to the component quality, nothing to complain about there, everything is real solid. You got thick player boards. Your warriors are just wood and simple black paint on them to resemble cute faces. Like, everything here is designed to be very functional, very simple, while still retaining a distinct style. I will say, though, shout out to these thick dice. They aren't super duper heavy, but they big. It's also at this point we should point out that everything in this review is referring to the most recent fourth printing of Root, which definitely has nicer dice than previous printings. Not too sure about the other components. These simple components also help greatly to contribute to Root's excellent clarity of information when looking at the game board. It's very clear to see what the hell is going on on the board, thanks to the simple nature of the board just having tokens and dudes. Like, that's it. So confusion is most likely going to come from not understanding how other factions work, rather than from what's on the board. Leader games also know that Root is going to be seen as an absolute cluster for new players, but thankfully they've included three rulebooks of varying complexity. There's this booklet for complete newcomers which showcases an example of the first two turns of every faction, this basic rulebook with lots of images and examples, and lastly, the Law of Root, which is this nitty gritty rulebook filled with every little detail about the game. Fun fact, the Law of Root is written like a real life code of laws. Everything within it is categorized by number and within that number is further decimal points pertaining to each and every sentence within it. Great little detail, love it, makes it super easy to find any rule you might need. Now unfortunately I already know how to play Root, so I can't personally comment on the effectiveness of the two simpler booklets. But from what I gather from reading online, the newcomer booklet that goes through the first two rounds is a godsend to groups of complete newcomers who don't have someone in their group to teach Root. It's also something that's new with the most recent printing and does a great job illustrating all of its example turns. For the gameplay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the insane asymmetry that's in Root. For how crazy different all the factions play, I am blown away by how well everything is actually balanced. Other variable player power games on BGG pale in comparison to Root when it comes to just how different every player is going to be from one another. Like, Root could have easily been a janky, dysfunctional trash heap, but it surprisingly isn't. In fact, it f***ing nails it. The game adheres to playtime really well and has a really strong theme tied into the gameplay of all of the factions, which all ultimately culminates into an extremely unique experience. As an example of this really strong theme, take a look at the Eerie Dynasty, who work by having a ruler running a regime who's going like, we're going to make the woodland forest great again. And so he mandates a decree, that decree being your queue of mandatory actions, which are all of the insane promises that your ruler is making. And the instant he can't fulfill them, his rule collapses and a new ruler rises up. Or look at the Woodland Alliance, who are the rebellious indigenous animals of Root, who are sick and tired of these damn birds and cats coming in and fighting over their land, they just want them out. The main deck of cards normally represents interests and favors some critters that inhabit the clearings of Root. And so the fact that the Woodland Alliance needs to first put these cards in their supporters deck and then spend them in order to place and interact with sympathy tokens on clearings 
is super thematic. They are quite literally drumming up sympathy for their cause. But going back to the balance, let's talk about all the work that went into making Root not a disjointed dumpster fire. The first super obvious thing is that the Eerie and the Cats are very clearly balanced around having a more head-on area control fighting dynamic between the two that they both play into in different ways. These two factions have the most warriors and can consistently have large armies and border presence, albeit done in different ways. The birds tend to be more explosive and then occasionally fall apart because of their decree, while the Cats have a more consistent strength that has to be maintained. With these two big army factions constantly making sure that shit's happening on the board, the designers then sprinkle in some chaos in the mix with the Woodland Alliance and the Vagabond. This is where I want to get into a term called Reach, which is a value assigned to each faction in the back of the Law of Rue. And the higher a faction's reach, the more that faction has the ability to actually influence the board, like where do they want to go and where they want to fight. Apparently, a ginormous amount of playtesting went into Reach, and I have to just applaud the designers for actually figuring this out as well as providing minimum reach values for each player account so that the games are assured to have balanced fights and politics happening. While reach doesn't really matter that much if all you own is a base game, it still shows what I'm talking about with the birds and the cats and that they are both mandatory to have in games with less than four people. Next up in regards to balance is that every faction will have ways to move in a more point heavy direction or a more fighting heavy direction. Cats can go hard on recruiter buildings for lots of warriors or try to craft and produce more wood for more points. Birds can have combat heavy leaders, or this guy that lets them craft better. Woodland Alliance can choose to have a setup where they have less warriors on the board with the upside of having more actions. Ergo, less military, more actions generate points with sympathy. Vagabond can go questing and help other factions, or just go straight up D&D murder hobo. And on top of all this, everyone can grow exponentially, with the caveat being that everyone can get hurt in key ways. Think like attacking the birds in certain ways so that their decree fails. Any faction that incurs too many losses from being attacked will find themselves with much weaker turns as they start to lose options, resources, and action efficiency. This all translates into hilarious politics as to why so-and-so is a threat, as the table argues over who's winning and who needs to be attacked more. Granted, you're definitely not going to immediately be familiar with how everyone works and how to counter them, but once you play like two or three times and everyone's on the same page, the decision making that comes out of Root is going to be really cool. Assuming everyone knows what they're doing and don't target the wrong players, no one's truly out of the game because you're never going to win from beating up losing players. This is because their turns are weaker, so harming them is wasting your turn for little gain while the stronger players can now push ahead uncontested. Also, remember how I just said that you can go harder on generating points or military strength? Well, military isn't just there to hurt others' point engines because the deck has these things called dominance cards, which can be played to remove your point marker off the board and instead change your win condition to ruling certain clearings at the start of your turn. This is a super cool mechanic that does a number of things to the game. First, it makes it so that there's always an avenue for winning if plans change and points don't come fast enough. Second, it makes it so that going super hard on fighting can be rewarding if the opportunity presents itself. And third, it lines up really well with players trying to craft big cards, since most dominants will require holding three clearings of the same color. So if a guy's crafting big cards and holding positions of those same colors as a result, they're going to be in a good spot to go for dominance, especially if they've been crafting a ton of stuff to help them fight. What all these pros ultimately add up to is that if everyone's all playing to win, the incentives of Root all line up to provide a surprisingly balanced experience. And it's absolutely incredible the amount of different pathways any given game can take as a result of all these factors lining up. I'm very certain that different groups playing Root are all going to have their own different metas as to what they find strongest because a lot of a faction's strength is actually perceived strength. And as a result, ends up affecting how much players are going to harm different factions throughout the course of a game. You can find tons of threads on Board Game Geek of people complaining about different factions with slight tendencies towards Woodland Alliance and Vagabond because it's a little hard to tell how they're doing and can kind of sneak up and win if you're not paying attention. But anyways, the point here is that Root is endlessly replayable. There's a lot to explore even in just a base game in between trying out the factions, playing them differently, and reacting to other players differently, but then the permutations and options just start exploding once you throw in expansions, which you are most definitely going to buy if you're into Root. Okay, last little bits of detail that I want to praise about Root. I really like how the faction's turns, while insanely different, are all generally organized very well into the three phases of Birdsong, Daylight, and Evening. Once you understand the structure of Birdsong being upkeep, Daylight being main action phase, and Evening being all your end of turn stuff, it makes learning different factions much easier, as well as making it easier to talk about faction abilities with other players. I also think that the asymmetric design greatly benefits from the design of colored clearings and cards. By making faction abilities require matching the color of cards with clearings, not only is Root simplifying decision making, but they're also incentivizing players to attack and control clearings that they may not otherwise care about just for their color. 
This also has the side effect of providing endless variance to the game state that feels incredibly fluid. I don't really see people bringing this up because it's so well done, it just feels natural and totally within your control. But when you think about it, it's like, oh wait, right, yeah, there, there is randomness. I am drawing from a deck of cards. Oh yeah, I also totally forgot to talk about these dice. So they're both identical 12-sided dice with an equal distribution of zeros, ones, twos, and threes. And so their variance is never gonna be that big and you can plan around them very well. Lastly, I wanna give a shout out to Leader Games for biting the bullet and actually doing a balancer rod to root in the last printing. It's pretty easy to be proud and not wanna make changes, especially in an area control game where power imbalance can be mitigated with politics. But they went ahead and did it anyway. And I'm pretty sure that everyone unanimously agrees that the game feels better as a result. You don't really need to care about this if you're a new player, but just know that the current version of Root is in a better state than it initially was. And with the new walkthrough booklet included, now's a really good time to be getting into Root, especially with the new Underworld expansion on the horizon. Now to get into the cons, the stuff that we don't think is so good about Root. First up, this is pretty dumb and nitpicky, but this game can be a pain in the ass to acquire. On top of that, I've heard online that there's folks out there who've backed the Kickstarter for Root's latest expansion, and they still haven't received their early copies yet. Same with those who pre-ordered their copies of the latest printing of Root, so I have no f***ing clue why we got our copy super duper early, but whatever. Basically what I'm saying is that Root's availability is pretty volatile. Like, what the heck, the Riverfolk expansion pre-order is already out of stock on Leader Games website. And even when ordering online, your results are gonna vary from when you receive it. But, I mean like whatever, it's a game now's Kickstarter, so yeah, there's some jank going on. Next, even though I was just talking about how now is a great time to jump into and learn Root, there's still some grievances I have with how the game teaches you. First of all, the faction overviews on the back of their boards kind of suck balls. I remember when I first started playing this game, when I was reading it, I was so confused as to what the hell I was even looking at. A big problem that Root has is their insistence on injecting a little bit of flavor into explaining game mechanics. Like, bitch, what? I just want to know how my actions work. Stop obfuscating what everything means by mixing around this flavor and terminology. Like, it reads well, sure, but like, it's not the greatest thing for learning what I'm doing. I think my biggest gripe with Root's explanations is how much they rely on keywords to explain it, but keywords don't mean anything to new players. Like, look at the first part of this overview card for the Woodland Alliance. The Woodland Alliance scores as they place sympathy on the map, scoring more as they place more. To play sympathy, they need to first add cards to their faction board as supporters. If you oppress sympathetic clearings though, they'll add to their supporters as well. Okay, if you're a newcomer, you're gonna have a lot of questions. First of all, what the f*** is sympathy? What does adding cards to their faction board as supporters even mean? What does oppressing a sympathetic clearing even mean? And why does that add to their supporters? Whatever that is. Here's how I would have written this. The Woodland Alliance scores by placing sympathy tokens on clearings, which requires spending cards from their supporters' deck, their own unique deck, separate from their hand. To move into or attack sympathy tokens requires you to add cards to their supporters. Do you see how this slight change immediately makes it clear what the f sympathy and supporters are and why you need to care? Like, I love the flavor of Root, don't get me wrong, but for the love of God, Leader Games, please save this stuff for strategy guides and the like, not for teaching newcomers the pure basics of the game. From what I've seen, if you're not the most eager and keen to quickly learn new games, Root might take a while to even really click for you. Like, it's totally reasonable to expect someone to get the gist of their own faction while playing, but to then understand what the f*** is going on with all these other dudes on the table, you know, to understand what the hell you're even doing against them so you can satisfyingly play a war game, yeah, that's gonna be really important. So, because Root does kind of an ad job of giving you good overviews, it's really gonna be up to the players to either teach themselves well or have a really good teacher. Also, I unfortunately can't really comment on how well the walkthrough guide actually teaches newcomers because it goes through two whole example rounds of gameplay before it lists some terminology on the back. I mean, it has great pictures though, and it claims it's for players who learn better by playing without really having to read anything. But as far as I can tell, Root does a really good job at explaining everything, but doesn't offer much in the way of being brief. I like this thick review, but hey, I got a lot to say, and at least there's timestamps in the description. Granted, Root does generally a great job with having the faction boards telling you everything about how the faction you're playing works. We're always a big fan of that, and Root does an impressive job of listing all of your faction's actions so you don't have to keep checking the rulebook, which is honestly really impressive, all things considered. What I will complain about is that the Vagabond faction board definitely could have added some text saying, move relationship to hostile when removing a warrior in this gray arrow. And instead of this flavor text on the top, they could have added that exhausted items on the left side of the board going to the satchel. Doesn't say it anywhere, okay. 
Yeah, for some reason the Vagabond board is missing a few minor details that make them a little less able to be played by just looking at the faction board. Finally, we want to add that while Root is labeled a two to four player game, this game is by far the best at four players, which has just enough politics and fighting going on to be interesting, but not so much that it's overwhelming. Three is definitely fine, but at two you're really missing out on the extremely unique interactions of Root, and you're essentially just reducing it to a more simple area control game between birds and cats. If you're looking for a single player mode, you're gonna have to pick up some expansions, which add bot opponents you can play against. Phew, okay. Last gripe with Root, even if it's pretty insignificant. What the hell are up with these favor of the mouse rabbit fox cards? Like, these cards are absolutely nutty and can cause really huge swings, because, like, look, they wipe out all enemies on a certain color of clearing. Like, I get that you can play around them by keeping an eye on how people are crafting and hoarding the cards for yourself, and that their effect is a little lessened because having crafting pieces in three matching clearings probably means you already have more presence there than everyone else, but all these favorite cards basically end up being insta-win cards and are really strong in comparison to all the other cards in the deck. They also tend to hurt the birds and cats the most since, you know, they're the ones with a ton of dudes, which is kind of crappy since the Tinker Vagabond can just walk into a clearing with three hammers and single-handedly cause nuclear Armageddon. So, yeah, these favorite bomb cards are dumb and yeah, you can play around them, but I don't think they offer interesting decisions to the game. Whew, finally, on to the recommender score. Here at Shelfside, we do things a little bit differently because there's two of us running the channel. First, we do a recommender score, which is a score that tries to be more unbiased with critical analysis to evaluate the game by weighing the aforementioned pros and cons. Then comes our personal scores, which is just personal opinions about the game. It's not trying to be objective at all. For the recommender score, we're going to give Rue a 8 yeah. out of 10. It's a great game. The cons we bring up aren't really deal breakers and are more nitpicks, if anything. And nowadays, with all the tuning Rue's gotten over the years, it definitely has the X factor that puts it up a little higher since it's trying so hard to be something new and does a really good job of doing it. There's nothing quite like Root out there with just how insanely asymmetric Root is. We cannot stress enough how much it feels like everyone's playing a different game here and just how well it all works out. Granted, there are a few kinks here and there like all the tiny annoyances pointed out in the cons, but if you're interested enough in Root to play it a whole bunch and really delve into just how much it has to offer, you're really not going to give a shit about all the cons we pointed out. Plus, you're also probably going to buy expansions, which actually go and further increase the rating for adding so much amazing content, especially the new deck, the Exiles and Partisans deck, which offers an entirely new deck of cards to draw and craft from that got rid of the f***ing bombs and actually has really cool effects. If you're looking for a game that has a ton of depth to just sink your teeth into and got a group of three other people to also do the same thing, we highly recommend Root. For the love of God, do not buy this game based off this aesthetic alone. It's very deceiving. <laughs> Make sure you know what you're signing up for and get ready to learn Root so that you can play with a group where everyone's actually playing the game because they understand what's going on. Root's amazing rulebook should help greatly with this, but maybe not so much their tutorial stuff, but hey, the nature of Root definitely makes it really hard to teach. The wording of Root's rules and visual clarity of Root's board is never really unclear, so as long as you can just dive in and learn it, everything goes smoothly for how ambitious its asymmetry is. Root is absolutely such an exotic game that we definitely recommend trying it out if you're interested. It's totally possible that it immediately turns you off after you try a game because everything just seems jank. In which case, this insane amount of asymmetry may not be for you. When doing some research on Board Game Geek, I can't really ascertain if all those anecdotes of people ditching Root after one horrible game are because of a terrible teacher, or because of personal preferences and not wanting to learn so much crap about all the different factions, Whatever it is, if you think you don't have the right group or personal purposes to enjoy Root, it's fine to give it a pass. But we're saying that if you have any interest, you should try out Root. Because it's definitely one of those games that could easily end up becoming a favorite once you and your friends are accustomed to it. Root is balanced, fast, and small, yet complex enough to really satisfy players looking for something deeper that also plays in a short amount of time. For how well all the different pieces of Root come together to form its gaming experience, it definitely is a great game. And for those who are fans of Root, they get so much out of this game, because there's so much content to explore, especially in the form of two expansions. If you really like asymmetry and seeing all the different permutation and ways different factions and board states align, Root scratches that itch like no other game does. So yeah, give yourselves a pat on the back, leader games. You've really made something special here, and we gotta give credit where credit's due with all the rigorous playtesting you guys had to do to make Root work. All of that packages together under this wrapping of incredible art and theme really does help to make Root stand out as a very special snowflake. Just iron out your damn jank and make your tutorials a little more ooga booga simple and this game would actually be perfect.
Okay, time for my personal score. What the hell do I think about Root? Well, I'm gonna give this game a 10 out of 10, holy sh This is my first personal 10 out of 10 on this channel! I absolutely love this game and I'm pretty much always down to play, always suggesting it, and always ready to go again after playing it. I remember before I even heard of this game like two or three years ago, I didn't even realize I had an itch for insane asymmetry until I tried it out. At first when I played Root, I was kind of just like, eh. What the, what the f*** is going on? But I was curious. My, my, my interest peaked from such a unique game, so I kept playing because other people kept suggesting it. But then, like, after two games, I was like, Oh my god, holy sh this game is incredible! Root really grew on me, and for the longest time, I was trying to figure out why. But the answer I've settled on is because I probably play way too much video games where asymmetry is pretty much the norm in design space. Hero shooters are insanely rampant right now. MOBAs as a genre have ridiculous asymmetry, like competitive games have really beat this style of gameplay into me. And I didn't really realize just how much I love learning matchup knowledge and fiddling around with asymmetric permutations until Root really got me to confront this question when writing this review. I tend to find that my interactions with board games as a medium is fairly slash and burn because while there's a lot of games out there that I would call good and I enjoy learning and playing them, I will usually inevitably get bored of them fairly quickly because it feels like I've seen all there is to see once I play like a dozen or so times. This is especially the case when every player in said game more or less works the same, but with Rue, no, 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 no. This game still keeps surprising me to this day, even with God knows how many playthroughs I have of it. Yeah, basically Rue has pushed aside so many other area control games for me, and current favorites for me are Twilight Imperium 4 for big long space gangbangs, and Root for if we have less people and less time. Which actually happens a lot. Anyways, yeah, I heavily enjoy novelty and a chase after unique stuff, so the fact that we have Root, which is both really unique and also really balanced, just blows my mind and sucks me in again and again. It also falls perfectly in line with my taste for a healthy amount of RNG, where there absolutely is randomness, but it's really controlled and the range of outcomes is really small and accountable. I also love constantly fighting people, and in Root, I get to do that quite a bit. And there's always a reason to go and do stuff with everything always constantly harming or blocking others. God damn, I love Root. Now if only I could get a goddamn copy of the Underworld expansion because I missed the fucking Kickstarter because I was not paying attention to that shit. God, leader games, why do you pull this shit? God! Okay, before I start this off, to be honest, it took me the longest to write this personal score. Now, for Root, the personal score for me is gonna be a f Whoa, 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 okay. So we filmed this Root review about a week ago and I was sitting there editing the footage and I've had some time to ponder over it and I talked to Daniel, he helped me elucidate my thoughts a lot more. So here it is, my redone personal score. Ooh. All right, for me, my personal score for Root is gonna be a four out of 10. Yeah, it's a below average experience for me. And when I start to pitch the backstory, it'll start to make sense. So Daniel and the rest of my gaming group was part of the crowd that picked this up two years ago playing this game all as newcomers, not really knowing what's going on either, but learning together. So they've been able to play it dozens of times to get a full understanding of all the different factions. Me, being a newcomer, was thrust in my first game as the Eerie Dynasties, and man, it was confusing as hell. In my first two hour game, my comprehension wasn't nearly at the level of theirs. And oh my god, when you have the other factions, don't even get me started. Ah, why did the Woodland Alliance just kill all my pieces? Oh, because he has these sympathy tokens you have to kill or else he just punishes you really hard. Oh, uh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, what about the Vagabond? He, he just blew up half the board, what the hell is that? Oh yeah, Vagabond, he just played favor of the rabbits and now half, now like half the board's gone, he just scored 15 points. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. I just think it's so important to have something like a practice run in these games and I, I never had that opportunity. The learning experience had been so soured in my first and second and third playthroughs that when it was time for my fourth playthrough, even though I won, somehow, I was just really mentally checked out. It didn't help either that the third and fourth playthroughs also had expansion stuff thrown in. I was definitely not ready for that. So this is when I asked myself, why am I playing a board game? Well, it's either A, to be competitive and win, and or to just hang out with the boys, have a good old time. Yeah, Root didn't really do either of these for me. Don't get me wrong, Root has a lot there competitively. There's even tournaments, and I respect the hell out of that. But from my game experience, I was definitely not competitive for two whole hours, multiple times. Even though I pointed out that I did win a game earlier, it wasn't because I was like out playing people, out mind gaming them. No, it was because they were arguing amongst themselves, 
I just got forgotten and I just sped ahead. It, it didn't really feel good at all and it was definitely a situation where winning felt worse than losing because you just played so badly. Okay, so besides competitiveness, what about B, just being pure fun? Well, when first pitched to me, I thought this game would be really good. It has the right theme, the right components, and I generally like asymmetry in games. But nope, didn't check off that box. While I do think that the little mini games you can play with each faction are pretty cool, I just think the asymmetry is just dialed up way too hard for me, and this is the first game I've ever had that complaint. So yeah, I generally like asymmetric games like Android Netrunner, or Chaos in the Old World, or even TI4 right here. So then the gears started turning in my head, and I concluded that since everyone has different turn structures, as Daniel pointed out earlier in the video, it's almost like four people are playing different games. So since the games are so different and I can't really relate to you, when you win or I win, I'm, I'm really not that invested. This is especially so when viewed through my eyes, because I've only played the game four times, which is a newcomer compared to most of my gaming group. So yeah, when helping Daniel write this review, it was definitely clear that this game has so much strategy behind the components, and the more you play it, the more it'll start to click. But that time investment's not really worth it for me. Other heavy asymmetric games aren't as bad because everyone just kind of fundamentally works in the same way, so maybe in your first, second playthrough, you'll have a good understanding of how to play. In my third playthrough of Rue, I still wasn't sure. Daniel brought up asymmetry in video games, and yeah, I love asymmetry in video games too, but I think the reason why I'm okay with that in video games and not in Rue is because video games as a medium are generally a lot more digestible. Games are usually under an hour, and you can go at your own pace in tackling the game. There's even bots if you want. Many of these heavy asymmetric games I would consider lifestyle games, and Root, yeah, it's good, but I don't, I'm not looking for a lifestyle board game. So yeah, Root. Root is actually good enough that I could get down and dirty with it if I had to. Haha, <laughs> if I had to. I could play it a lot, and then raise my score to probably above average, especially if I played it with different groups. Playing it with other newcomers like myself would definitely make the experience more enjoyable, but I don't really have a drive to teach people the game. Plus, I'm not going to really be able to teach them the game because I don't own the game, and I don't want to buy this game anytime soon. Look, at the end of the day, I have so many board games, so I don't really want to throw away a game night to play this for two hours when I have so many other games I just need to try. This is a chore, this is fun. One more thing. So yeah, the digital version of this game is coming out soon and that's pretty enticing because I can play it with computer bots or with randoms online. So yeah, I'll have to try that out, let you guys know what I think. Root feels like a test in asymmetric area control gone right, where they based all the factions off some real world equivalency of governing or managing rule and then use that as the basis for how they design how each faction operates. This, when mixed together with the adorable aesthetic of woodland critters running around trying to murder each other, makes for a game with really cool gameplay, really cool theme, and a really cool look. And the three of these things tie in together for an extremely cohesive package. The main takeaway here is that if you enjoy heavy asymmetry, you're going to be in for a treat with this game. So go on out there, assume the role of whatever faction is vying for control of the root of the forest, and show those woodland critters who really rules the great outdoors. But anyways, that's going to be it for our shelf-side review of A Root, a game of woodland mites and right. Thank you all for a watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next shelf-side video. Goodbye.